you and uh, good afternoon. Uh, I hope I'll be able to impart to you the <laughs> emerging trend now with regard to quality and safety. I chose Mango as the club because I've been working on this club for more than uh, 20 years. And uh, this is my favorite club, followed by banana and the papaya and of course uh, the vegetable clubs. Now, uh, the uh, mango is known in the international trade as the Philippine Super Mango. It used to be called Manila Mango, but because of the complaints of other growers in the Visayas and Mindanao, uh, there's no mango in Manila, and also because of the, uh, the, the conflict between the Manila Mango of Mexico, uh, it was changed to Philippine Super Mango. This is the most, third most important fruit next to uh, banana and pineapple, the first two are our major export crops. And uh, the major commercial cultivar is uh, so-called carabao. And uh, this represents 73% of total mango production. Now we are very proud of our uh, carabao mango. We always say that this is probably the best mango in the world because of its excellent eating quality. It has good blending of sweetness and sourness. The flesh is tender and melting, and it has this delicate and aromatic uh, flavor. Now, the other advantage of our uh, carabao mango is that this is very responsive to uh, flower induction. The uh, discovery of potassium nitrate, thanks to Dr. Barba, revolutionized our mango industry. And uh, we can program uh, the, uh, man the uh, production of mango, or we can produce mango year-round, and uh, this is probably the reason why this is the third uh, most important crop. Now, 85% of the uh, mangoes that uh, we produce come from small farms. And uh, even though the farms are small, these small farmers uh, are part of the uh, so-called export uh, trade of mango because uh, mangoes come from small farms. Now, uh, in 2010, or last year, the volume of production was uh, 825,676 metric tons. Uh, there was a 7% increase from in production from 2007 to uh, 2009. And the major production area is still the Ilocos region, comprising about 30% or more than 35% of the total uh, Philippine uh, mango production. Um, so these are the top 10 uh, mango producing uh, areas. Uh, number one is the Lagos region, followed by Zamboanga, Peninsula. And then uh, Calabarzal is number eight. And Davao region is still uh, number 10. But uh, this is an emerging uh, production area because of the expansion of mango plantings that started in the 1980s. No? So all throughout the Philippines, we produce mango. Now we have the so-called, uh, we term the on-season mango production. These are the mangoes produced in uh, Luzon, as well as in Visayas, during the months of uh, January until May. Now, after May, mangoes, uh, until June, it may come from the Visayas region, but uh, during the months of July until uh, December, mangoes come from Mindanao. You know? And uh, we call them the off-season mango production. But still, the volume uh, from Mindanao is still uh, low, it's about 25%. Visayas contribute about 17% this uh, mango production. Now, in these areas, in the zone, especially in uh, Ilocos region, uh, the conditions or the climatic conditions are very favorable for uh, mango production, unlike in uh, Mindanao, wherein uh, they said that there are only two climates in Mindanao, the wet and the very wet. And uh, these climatic conditions are not suitable, really, for uh, mango production. Now, with regard to uh, our rank, now, this was a 20, 2005 data, we, uh, number five, in 2005, but the latest data that I got was in 2007, and we are now number seven, no? um, outpaced the pilot of Pakistan and other uh, mango producing areas in the world. Now, our Philippine exports, uh, the main exports are in the uh, Asian region, uh, the number one export market is Japan, uh, which contributes about 52.88%. This is in terms of value, not in terms of volume, no? because the volume is lower compared 
with what we send to Hong Kong, uh, which is 35.67% in terms of uh, value. This followed by Korea, 4%, Korea now is an emerging market, and then China, 2.1%, Singapore is 1.9%, and the rest uh, scattered in North America, uh, Middle East, and Europe. Uh. Now, with these uh, markets, uh, mangoes are uh, transported by sea. Uh. Now, when it comes to North America, Middle East, and Europe, the, the mangoes have to be transported by plane, and it's really very expensive. That's why we cannot really compete. Now, uh, I said that the, uh, in terms of uh, value, uh, Japan is uh, number one. Now, this is the trend in the volume and value of our export. In 2007, we exported about 26,430 metric tons, valued at 23.28 20, million dollars. In 2008, this decreased to 20.84,000 metric tons. The value also decreased, 19.58 million dollars. And in 2009, this further decreased to 20,380 metric tons. And Masyadong nabarat ang mangga natin is only about 15.98 uh, 15 million dollars. So, what happened? No? Because of the uh, concerns, uh, issues, one is for quality and safety, particularly pesticide residues. Uh, we have been a, fre a frequent violator of this uh, MRL or the maximum residue level, especially in the case of Japan. And then storage and shelf life extension, I will explain that later on. And then, sanitary and phytosanitary measures with regard to the requirements of importing countries with regard to quarantine or disinfestation. Now, what are the trends now in the fruit and vegetable sector? Uh, I think two weeks ago, there was a seminar given by Dr. Ben Concepcion on the uh, emergence of supermarkets and hypermarkets. So, in terms of the uh, quality requirements of these uh, supermarkets, they are much higher than the uh, quality requirements of the uh, domestic market. And then we have this rapid urbanization. So uh, this means that uh, if we create a big demand, uh, domestic demand in the case of the uh, urban market, urban uh, population. And then uh, on the other hand, this rapid urbanization, the lands that are supposed to be for agriculture are now being converted into other uses, industrial, golf courses, uh, residences. So, what is the trend now? Uh, production areas are now moving away from consumption centers. And this leads to a longer supply chain. And then, uh, demand for more exotic and health foods accordingly, we should uh, uh, promote uh, our mango as a health food. You know? What is the glycemic index? What is the vitamin C content? And accordingly, they should be indicated in the labels. And then, of course, we have this trade liberalization. We are competing uh, with the uh, different markets, export markets uh, for the foods. For example, this was taken in Hong Kong. This is our uh, carabao mango. This is the mango that uh, comes from Australia. Uh, this is uh, the mangoes are currently uh, called the uh, apple mango. This is the uh, they call the R2 R2. R2E2. R2E2 pala po. So this R2E2, that's the name of their uh, new variety. And they are continuously developing uh, new varieties to be offered. So one, uh, one kilo of this uh, Australian man was about 50 uh, Hong Kong dollars versus our 18, uh, best 18 uh, Hong Kong dollars per kilo. The Carabao Mango. And uh, also, again, we have this increasing concern on quality and safety in supermarkets and trade liberalization. Now, what are the further trends in uh, consumer or the consumer demand trends? No? So, this was uh, taken from the uh, paper of Dr. Rosa Roll. So, this is now the um, a big chunk still of the consumers are price conscious. So, these are the uh, commodities or the crafts in the wet market is followed by the supermarkets and the upmarkets, uh, increasing concern on safety, quality, convenience, and variety of crafts offered in the supermarkets, 
And then we have now uh, health and nutrition, uh -huh. and then innovation on the uh, upper uh, side of the triangle. So, for example, uh, this is not a caramel mango. This is a Mexican mango, uh, which looks like our caramel mango. This is uh, this is how they pack mangoes uh, in the retail uh, supermarkets in Los Angeles. Uh, mangoes come from uh, Mexico. So, what are the quality and safety concerns? Now, quality is lost even before fruits are harvested. Uh -huh. uh, we need a quality profile evaluation of mangoes delivered to uh, packing houses uh, for export mangoes. And uh, the recovery of uh, export grape fruits is only about 30 to 60 percent. So far, 60 percent is the highest. Uh -huh. And uh, although we have the so called Philippine National Standard for mangoes, still uh, implementation is mandatory. As voluntary, it's not mandatory. So, in the uh, existing uh, trade of mango, these are the arbitrary classifications. You have the so-called Japan grape. This is the quality of the mango, almost flawless. No? You have the Hong Kong grape, and you have the Japan grape, they will call it the uh, Hong Kong grape. And then, you have the local grape, probably these are the mangoes that we uh, buy in the uh, domestic or in the wet market. And then lastly, they have the so-called dried or the processing grade, sometimes they call that pangiling. So, and uh, depending also on the size of the mango in, uh, in the current trade, they have the so-called the pricing system of, for example, 35 down 5. That means 35 pesos if it's, ex if it's large, 30 pesos if it's medium, 25 pesos if that is small. No? So sometimes they, uh, they uh, have the misconception of being a large mango, it is of good quality, which is not the case. Uh, I said that uh, we have an advantage in terms of respons responsiveness of mango to flower induction. At the same time, you know, we are also endowed with several problems in mango production. Our mango is host to a variety of insect pests and diseases, uh, which are uh, these diseases or insect pests attack the mango during production? So we have the seed fly, we have the leaves, scab, seed borer, and so on. So these are the major causes of uh, rejection. Um, the apparent um, lack of awareness of uh, most of our farmers on the causes of this rejection or what are what what the causes this. Uh, uh, defects in mango, they give arbitrary names, no? Hindi na alam kung ito kayo. Due to insect or due to uh, diseases. For example, they have this so-called chico-chico. May it's been done with doble, no? Chico-chico. This mango is infested with grapes, no? Kasi hindi alam kung ito. But they don't know that this is due to grapes. They just call it chico-chico, no? Uh, because it looks like chico. It does not look like the field. It looks like, uh, does not look like mango. And then, of course, seed border damage. And then uh, we have this so called day, they call this Nora Nora. <laughs> so they call that Nora Nora. Uh, this is due to uh, either seed fly or capsid bug. And then uh, these are the uh, mini bugs and scale uh, infestations. And then we have this so called Hachurin. We really got a hard uh, we, uh, it took us really more than one week for us to really decipher what, what is actually, you know? Um So apparently, it is uh, caused by uh, ants. You, know? you see, when the mango is bad, it creates uh, a microclimate, it's humid inside the bag, and that condition is favorable for minibag and scale insect infestation. Now, uh, the excreta from these uh, minibags and scale insects uh, creates a symbiotic relationship. Gusto ng ants, no? So, when the mango is bad and the condition is favorable, uh, ant infestation is most likely to occur. Now, when the ants are uh, agitated during harvesting, no? Mga yan, no? pero kinakagat nila is the mango fruit. No? At harvest, this uh, ant attack on the mango fruit is not apparent. This will become apparent 24 to 48 hours after harvest. So they call ang tinawag ng mga classifiers and uh, farmers is anchurin. Uh, this is a misconception di ba hindi iyak ang mga ay ang ants, ano? So apparently, when the uh, ants agitated, di ba kinakagat tayo, it releases formic acid. 
And then the reaction of the formic acid on uh, mango sap creates that uh, condition of uh, seeping and discoloration on the field. No? So at this stage, the mangoes are already in the hands of the exporters. And this is a major cause of rejection. Now, uh, limited knowledge or lack of knowledge on the so-called good agricultural practices. No? Uh, GAP is uh, a recognized international regulatory tool to assure uh, the safety of, uh, or assure or reduce the risk of uh, contamination in the chemical, physical, or microbial contamination, and at the same time protecting the environment and protecting the uh, safety of the workers. But uh, in apparent uh, desire of the uh, growers, to really produce mangoes of really good quality or almost flawless because price or the quality is the or the price determine the quality is determinant the determinant of price. So they will really uh, spray the mango fruits no, to produce this uh, flawless mango. So we have the so-called calendar-based spraying. Now in the zone we did uh, a documentation of the uh, number of sprays being done on mango fruits, no? or mango trees starting from flower induction. In Luzon, since uh, it's a dry area, it ranges from uh, six to seven uh, sprayings. In Mindanao, where it is more problematic because of the climate condition, it can range from 10 to 12 pesticide sprays. And you have the so-called pesticide cocktailing. No? Uh, in one spraying, you have the uh, foliar fertilizer, you have the fungicide, and then a uh, combination of two insecticides. So, uh, say I agree, uh, if uh, climatic condition is not favorable. So, what is the result? We have these uh, uh, violations with regards to maximum residue levels, especially the two insecticides, chlorpyrifos and cypermethrin. Mm -hmm. And uh, chlorpyrifos now is banned for use in mango, but cypermethrin is still being used because we have 100 grams of cypermethrin. No? Uh, delicado tau, kung iba niya. So we have this uh, problem also of the differences in the MRL uh, standards, requirements of uh, different countries. No? Not all decks, you must not ask, but Japan, you see Japan, they have very low uh, MRL no? for these uh, different uh, pesticides used for mango, for pyrifos, epernetrin, propenophos, etc., etc. 0.05 ppm, 0 0.03, 0 0.05. And if the fungicide or the pesticide being used for mango is not in their positive list, the uh, default value is uh, 0 0.01. And that is very low. No? And it's becoming lower, I think. No? Uh, now, uh, after paradise quality losses still occur along the chain, there was a study conducted jointly by uh, DA, uh, BPREN, uh, Filmen, and UPLB. And at each point, or at each player in the chain, uh, losses occur. Cheaper, 11.8, 14.7. Retailer, you will think that it's low, but uh, if the uh, mangoes are grown during the rainy season, it will be higher because of this problem of anthracnose. Uh, so if this is the problem, tawag na sa ating carbo mango ay dalmation. <laughs> so, uh, and then, uh, of course, maybe you will see this in the uh, wet market. This is how mangoes look after several layers of handling. Uh, we follow the, the movement of mango from the grower until it reaches the wet market and supermarket and until uh, the Hong Kong market. No? So, uh, mangoes come from, uh, or came from the bow. Uh, it was bought by traders. And then this, this was... Um, brought in a hot water treatment facility for disease control. And then uh, you have the procurement agent of the exporter. Mangoes are delivered by plane, it is for Hong Kong market. So double to Manila by plane. And then uh, it will be brought to the warehouse in Manila near the port. And then uh, after that, mangoes will be resorted as to quality and size. And then uh, loaded in the container vans for shipment to Hong Kong. Uh, shipment to Hong Kong is under non-refrigerated condition and it takes about two and a half to three days. No? And then uh, those that are rejected for the Hong Kong market are brought in the supermarket and in the market. And then
And then, uh, in the case of the procurement agent, uh, still gets some of the reject, and these are delivered in Cebu for processing. No? So, uh, at which point in the chain losses occur, both in quantity and quality. Now, uh, our one uh, trading system or marketing system is characterized by a multi layered and disaggregated sector. No? So, for example, in the case of the Hong Kong market, uh, the Hong Kong importer, the exporter, and the procurement agent, it is a managed and well coordinated chain. However, when it comes to the traders and the growers, well, can be by bang layers. So, for example, this procurement agent um, uh, trades with the trader. He can have one up to five traders. No? Now, this trader has the so-called dicer. Uh, it's a shortcut for merchandiser, uh, supermarket merchandiser. Yeah. Pero kung sa mga dicer or locator, his only responsibility is to look for mangoes that will be harvested. No? So once he has uh, a knowledge as to where mangoes will come from, so he is a trader. And then, so this trader or this dicer transacts business with different growers. No? Kung ano yung price is right kasi, no? so lowest or highest bidder. So, what we want is for the chain to be coordinated, no? to deliver the values that are desired by the customer. So, these are just some pictures on these uh, different handling systems in Macos, why losses occur in quality and quantity. So, these are the collecting baskets. If the mangoes are very tall, we have this collecting basket where we have the fruits are placed. And then, when they are already filled, this is not a good practice, probably because of the lack of containers. So there will be loss because they think that the mango screen it can withstand any amount of handling. So that's what they thought. And then uh, this is sorting of the field. No? So you have these uh, piles of mango being uh, sorted. And then uh, these are the uh, the mangoes come from Mindanao. These are the containers. No? The actual capacity of this uh, banana carton is only about. 12.5 to 13 kilograms. So, but when they are loaded or packed with mangoes, they can increase the capacity to about 27, double, more than double. No? So what's the tendency of this hunter to a child big or pan, no? So you have really difficulty in handling the mangoes. And then you have different containers with uh, rattan baskets or uh, hat or hat. No? So uh, this can contain about uh, 40 to uh, 50 kilograms of mangoes. This is in uh, Ilo Ilo and Timaras, they have the uh, bamboo basket, capacity is about 60 kilograms, the actual capacity is only 40 kilograms, but they can still load 20 kilograms on top. No? Because the mode of payment during transport is on a container basis, not on a weight basis. So the bigger the container, the cheaper the transport cost. Mm -hmm. And uh, this practice of stepping onto uh, buses or uh, manuals during loading and unloading in trucks. Uh, I mentioned about GAP. Traceability is one of the uh, important components of GAP. No? Traceability is the ability to uh, trace, uh, traceability to trace the movement of the, the product from production or service handling until distribution. No? It is an important tool for the firm to trace where the product is or where is the source of um, contamination in the case of uh, safety. Uh, um, concern, no? So, for example, these are the Amargo farms in Mindanao. No? Pagunta ng Dundo, they have different trees uh, harvested, no? They are sorted, they are packed, no? And then delivered to an exporter's packing house. So, in the exporting, uh, exporter's packing house, mangoes come from different areas, no? They are uh, processed, they do the treatment, etc. And then packed in uh, cartons for export and uh, the state in supermarkets in Japan. This is our carbon mango. So, in, the ca in cases of uh, complaints, no? sa palagay, di ba mag-trace pa? Kung ito, isang mga ganito, isang mga galing. <coughs> sa Pilipinas, nasa Japan na yan. No? We have a case, no? We have a case uh, last year, uh, a violation in the case of a fungicide. The fungicide is the active ingredient is flucidazole. And uh, in, uh, in Japan, when you export to Japan, uh, there is random sampling upon arrival at the port, no? in terms of residue. No? And then, uh, 
it's only it's not only at the port. They can do random sampling in uh, the markets. No? In the case of this Pasila so the fungicide, it was detected in the retail store in a certain province in Japan. No? So apparently the traceability system of the exporter was good and they were able to trace where the mangoes came from. The mangoes came from Cebu. And the same is true with the, in the case of chlorpyrifos. No? Uh, our violation in the case of chlorpyrifos got afforded in 2006 and that really affected our uh, export. And they were able to trace it in Double del Sur, no? in uh, Digos, Double del Sur. And apparently the reason why chlorpyrifos was used was because of the ant infestation. Kasi pag harvest ng mangga, no? eh, maraming ants dun sa farm. So, they sprayed one day before harvesting, they sprayed chlorpyrifos probably because that was the insecticide on hand. No? So, when the one was reached Japan, ang taas na residue. No? Uh, kasi hindi alam ng mga farmers na hindi pala pwede. Because if you apply chlorpyrifos, malaki yung tinatawag na pre-harvest interval for the naman. Now, uh, Again, export, our concern is the fruit fly. Our importing countries don't want our fruit fly, although they have their own fruit flies also, so it is an impediment to our export. No? Of course, you don't want to eat mangoes na ganyan, no? na may larva, no? additional protein. <laughs> yeah. So, our infestation of fruit fly occurs as the fruit is nearing maturation. No? So, uh, to uh, to protect the industry, agricultural industry of importing countries, they require this uh, vapor heat treatment, phytosanitary certificates to accompany the shipment. So depending on the importing country, these requirements will vary. No? So in the case of uh, Japan, Korea, Australia, and USA, they require vapor heat treatment of mangoes. No? So uh, this, this uh, entails gradual exposure of the fruit to high temperature, until the disinfestation temperature of 46 degrees centigrade is attained. No? So it takes about 3 to 4 hours uh, to complete this uh, vapor heat treatment. And then in the case of China, Makikuso on China, before we are only, uh, or only a phytosanitary certificate uh, was issued. No? But in 2000, uh, 2006, 2006, Accordingly, the, the uh, Chinese quarantine authorities um, intercepted fruit flies no, from uh, the mangoes that we export. So they required a, a quarantine treatment. At first, they, they want vapor heat treatment. Vapor heat treatment was expensive. No? So uh, extended hot water treatment uh, has been developed uh, before. And uh, this was the uh, alternative to vapor heat treatment. So this was accepted by the uh, Chinese quarantine authorities, so starting in 2007, this is uh, already the requirement. Mangoes going to China should be subjected to extended hot water treatment. But we have problems, no? <laughs> but we have problems, no? Uh, mangoes, our carbon mangoes, if you subject them to prolonged heat treatment, especially if they are immature, they are susceptible to this disorder, to this internal breakdown. There are no external manifestations of the disorder. You have this um, impaired uh, starch uh, degradation, you have cavities, no? and uh, natakot, natakot sila, may ito bagong disease ang mga no? Apparently, this is a physiological disorder, not, uh, not due to pathogens or insects. No? This was due to preventative treatment. And we found out that maturity of the fruit is one of the uh, factors that will induce uh, this uh, disorder. Um, we have an excellent mango, but this is uh, the mango that we have has inherently short shelf life. No? Within five to seven days after harvest, if the mangoes are fully mature, they will ripen. No? Now, uh, sea shipment duration. Japan takes five to six days. It's okay, sea shipment. Hong Kong, three days, all right. But uh, if you go to Middle East, North America, and Europe, no? Uh, for Middle East, it's about 18 to 21 days by sea, 28 days for North America, 32 days for, for Europe. Plus, five days more uh, for distribution. No? So, uh, and then, of course, consumers buy with their eyes. No? We want our mangoes to be like this. No? External appearance matters most. 
that is why we have this liter uh, so many pesticides sprays. So gusto niyo makinis na magda, ayun niyo ng gesto. So in Mindanao, hindi na tawag mo. In Mindanao, some of the traders, no, they beat mangoes in uh, Ben Lake or Ben Hill. No? And these mangoes are the ones being shipped to the Visayas, Bicol region, and also in Metro Manila. Hindi naman lahat yun. Ganyan yun na ako. Alin ang binibig, no? So, in their effort to uh, control stem and lab. Yeah. So, that is the concern. So, how do we address these quality and safety concerns, no? Um, we have been uh, promoting uh, this so-called integrated crop management. My sparring partner is <laughs> Dr. Roka Otina and the other uh, staff from the Crop Protection Cluster in cooperation with different uh, government agencies. So we are uh, promoting this integrated uh, crop management, which is a rational approach to uh, uh, control or reduce uh, the risks. No? And it can be a combination of traditional techniques like UBO, or shaking the, uh, the uh, particles when uh, there is rain because of the problem of loss of light, or new strategies no? to increase productivity, enhance the quality, and ensure the safety of consumers. No? So in the case of, we are focusing on this IPM, disease management, uh, and insect uh, management. So uh, we are implementing this. Uh, we are following the phenology of the mango. So we start with uh, the stage for after harvest up to harvest. Mm -hmm. you know? So protecting the shoots, uh, the developing flower, the flower, and the fruit. You know? So it's a combination of cultural practices and pesticide management, which is a need-based study program. Uh, Dr. Opina also developed this uh, so-called uh, pesticide spray decision tool. No? And uh, it's really taking us uh, a lot of effort for the uh, growers to really uh, comprehend or accept or adapt this, uh, this uh, decision tool. No? I'll give you a specific example. Now in the case of mango, uh, you have these different or these uh, different stages where in disease and insect infestation are critical. No? So for example, in the case of bagging, bagging uh, uh, is done at about uh, 55 to 60 days after flower induction and the uh, size of the fruit is about an egg size. No? And uh, bagging will reduce the uh, use of uh, pesticides. No? So if you will uh, bag, no, uh, you need to spray insecticide and fungicide the speaker before bagging. No? If you have problems of scale and really bugs no, with bagging, or if you have no problems, then no need for spraying. But if you have problems of scale and minimals, then you need to spray insecticide only. So these are the different, uh, there are variations of these uh, tools. And of course, we are promoting uh, GAP. 2009, we already had this uh, good agricultural practices for mango. Uh, Dr. Lina Serrano is the one uh, heavily involved in the promotion of these uh, good agricultural practices. Uh, it's a combination of training of trainers and uh, techno demos on uh, what GAP is all about. And in the case of the, so far, we have no GAP certified mango farm yet. As compared to Thailand, more than 100, I think 500 mango growers that are GAP certified. So what are the exporters uh, doing? They have the so-called accredited supplier program. No? Uh, if, you, if you want to supply the exporter that is accredited, ka, you should follow the recommended management program uh, of the exporter. You need to present a documentation on the records of what you spray. And then uh, pesticide residue analysis is a must. No? And this is being done by the Bureau of Plant Industry. And then also Dr. Serrano has an ongoing uh, project together with GAP on this uh, development of traceability system uh, for mango. And then, of course, uh, support systems, establishment of packing houses with hot water treatment facilities is being funded by the Department of Agriculture, showcasing the uh, benefits that you can derive from uh, hot water treatment of mangoes. This is a physical treatment of controlling diseases. Now, uh, in terms of uh, the disorders, in terms of breakdown in mango, we have been uh, conducting uh, researches as to how to reduce the incidence of these uh, disorders. So we are doing conditioning treatments, uh, combination of hot water treatment. Dr. Kevin Yotengo is modifying the treatment to further reduce 
the incidence of the disorder. Uh, we are modifying the uh, extended hot water heat to reduce the internal breakdown. Just to show you what we are doing, we will have a larva, we will have a fruit. Subject it to any modification of the treatment and then count again the larva whether they are alive 24 hours after treatment or whether they were able to be made, etc. And so far we are uh, successful in reducing the uh, treatment time without impairing the fruit quality, ensuring that larva are killed. In, case, in the case of extension of storage life, uh, we have developed uh, techniques of extending the um, storage life of mango, the so-called controlled atmosphere storage and modified atmosphere packaging. Uh, for, for about 28 days, we can keep the mangoes under these conditions in combination with low temperature. We have conducted uh, stationary trials in about, about seven tons of mangoes. So 28 days plus five days of but sabi ng exporters, ganda ng tanaw, no? Hindi lang na parang figure. But these uh, two uh, storage techniques need to be complemented with integrated pre- and post-harvest disease management no? to really get the benefit, no? We have been uh, conducting training and extension activities, participatory action research, techno demos, uh, cluster formation among mango growers, uh, telling them uh, or uh, teaching them uh, what is uh, resistance management in terms of alternating the different active ingredients of the pesticides, how to compute uh, for the pesticide that they will apply, uh, demonstration on how to do appropriate pruning and sanitation, etc. Now, of course, our partners are the Department of Agriculture and other agencies, uh, the Bureau of Agriculture and Fisheries Product Standards, uh, by two, 2015, we are already an ASEAN community, right, Dr. Serrano? So that means that uh, we have free trade, and uh, in, that, in that case, we have to harmonize our GAP standards with that of the ASEAN standards, no? And we should facilitate GAP certification. In the case of the Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority, they are establishing the maximum residue levels for the other insecticides and fungicides that are being used for mango. And in the case of the Bureau of Plant Industry, they are providing free pesticide residue analysis uh, as long as you are a member of an accredited uh, mango supplier. No? If not, then you have to pay 5,000 pesos per analysis. And then, uh, of course, provision of enabling environment, of course, adequate infrastructure, yung farm to market road na yan ay uh, masyadong gasgas. Pero sa hanggang ngayon, ang problema pa rin yung farm to market road. We can produce good quality mangoes, but if your mangoes will pass through this road, then, you know, what I mean? Capability building, uh, concerted effort of the different government agencies, local government units, other SEUs. Uh, we are, we hope to strengthen the fresh produce associations or clusters, and of course, forging strong linkage between the growers and buyers, be in the domestic and export market, and then provision of effective and timely market information system. Uh, I have to text, still, this is the complaint of uh, farmers and growers. And then, of course, consumer education on food safety. You know, we need to develop a focused strategy or messages targeting the general public. So that's all, and thank you very much. No? I took this picture in Guimaras during the uh, Mango Field Day. Good quality, but are they safe? So thank you very much. I'd like to acknowledge the. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the cooperation of our uh, of five co-workers of HDRC, the support of DA, OST, the local government units, and the cooperation of other SEUs in. The uh, almost 20 years of my involvement in uh, research and development in my Thank you, Dr. Sierra. At this point, we now open the floor for our audience. Dr. Sierra. Thank you, Dr. I'm uh, Marcy Sai from Sherka. In one of your slides, uh, you indicated a decrease in exports from 2007 to 2008 to 2009 and have stated some of the reasons, concerns, and issues. Um, I'm curious if baka there is a decrease in exports because we have decreased production. Um, because 
I was thinking that 2007, 2008 was the Baguio season. So, and from observation, I live in Jubileville by the mango orchard of UPLD. That particular year, not only during the typhoon, but even after the typhoon, there was there was no bunga, there was no, there were no fruits in the, the that area. So I was just wondering if maybe the cost of that low export was the low volume was because we were not producing enough mangoes for that particular period because of climate change. But <laughs> based, based on the uh, data provided or the data that we got from BAS, from 2007 to 2009, there was actually a 7.3% increase in production. But despite the increase in production, 7.3 months, increase in production from 2007 to 2009, but despite the increase in production, still the, uh, the volume of uh, our micro exports decreased. No? In fact, uh, I don't know if that was true. No? In, uh, I think, two years ago, or was, yeah, two years ago, Again, it's because uh, we are a member of the so-called National Mango Action Team. Uh, this National Mango Action Team, this is composed of different uh, staff of uh, personnel from different government agencies as well as the private sector, you know, exporters, uh, processors, farmers, growers. No? And according to them, uh, I think Mexico has overtaken us in the case of our uh, mango export to Japan. Of course, I uh, think the season of mango in uh, Mexico is different from ours, but even then, you know, uh, that is a I think that is one of the factors. And also, Australia is now uh, slowly penetrating our export markets in Hong Kong and China. They're already there. And uh, uh, the, I think the, uh, although we have different seasons again, uh, uh, Australia, they have the mango season is October, November. Ours we can produce year round. Fortunately, the mangoes, the varieties of mangoes, do not respond to potassium nitrate or any uh, flower inducer. No? But uh, they are de continuously developing varieties. No? Now, in the case of this R2E2, this uh, variety was developed with the main objective of uh, longer storage period. And this is also the mango that reaches the European market. The Australian variety. In the case of our Carabao mango, we have a good mango, but uh, the longer you keep them, mas dominitisyon ba lang. So uh, probably uh, we really need to pursue a strong uh, breeding program in terms of improving uh, the storage life of our uh, Carabao mango. No? And uh, sabi nga ng iba, the international trade of mango is being dominated by the so-called Florida-type mangoes, yung apple mango, may uh, orange or red flash. Ngayon nga, purple na eh. No? Yun yung mga developments in uh, South Africa, breeding programs in South Africa, Brazil, Australia, no? Sabi nga ng Hapon, gawin nyo kayong uh, parang apple mango din yung mangan nyo, but nasa carbo mango. Uh, so that is the challenge to yeah, only that is doing. We are shortening the, uh, kasi yung, 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 yung uh, uh, juvenility ng mangga, no? Kasi, if you do, uh, if you do, if you do breeding program, in case of mango, how many years will it take for it to bear fruit, no? Unlike, unlike vegetable crops or unlike papayas, etc. So Lilian uh, Patena is now doing, uh, or has developed, I think, a technique on how to shorten. Not yet. I'm always proud of our Filipino mangoes, but whenever I'm in front of Indonesians, they would say their Arumanis mango is better, with Pakistani their mangoes are better, and Australians said that our man mangoes are not sweet. Yeah, so is there any uh, attempt to match the preferences of the consumers with the bricks of our mango, like what you're saying that you do this uh, sweet mango uh, and market it to a different 
we are matching the sweetness of the mango with the preferences of uh, the consumers by studying the BRICS preferences. That's one. And my the second is a comment, more of a comment than a question. That there is also several. Uh, there are also several attempts to enhance. Uh, practices within the mango chain, like uh, as a substitute for carton or boxes, we now are using, as you have shown, plastic crates to reduce uh, damages to our mangoes. And also there are attempts to improve handling in terms of uh, retailer-friendly boxes in the sense that once they are boxed, they are re ready for display by just removing the top of the boxes. And the third is also the use of collaps collapsible crates to reduce cost and uh, improve volume of uh, transport as well. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you for, the, for imparting those uh, developments. No? Uh, now the first question on the sweet matching the uh, sweetness with regard to consumer preference. No? I think that is the one that is uh, missing in our um, so-called uh, value chain or supply chain uh, activities. No? Uh, we, now the trend is uh, market food, not uh, market push. No? We want to deliver the uh, values or attributes desired by the consumer. So for example, in the case of mango, we are, we are saying that our mango is sweet. No? Sabi na ng mga diabetic ayaw na ng sweet. No? Kasi sabi namin sa nakausap ko, pag kasi kumakain ng mango, kasi gusto niya talaga mga kalahating piece nila ang pinakain niya. Kasi yung window sugar level niya, kailangan ma-maintain. No? Pero uh, there are reports that our mango, the glycemic index, is low. When you say low, ang uh, glycemic index that is low is 55 and below. No? Now, in terms of matching, palito yun ang kulang natin. Lalo na yung export market. Kasi nga, Australia sabi nila their mango is sweet. No? Unlike our mango. Probably because they taste it and mature caramel mango. Kasi that is, uh, yan isang problema natin, no? Farmers, traders, they know when mango is really fully mature. Pag talagang mature ang mangga, matamis siya, no? But the major determinant of maturity is the price. Yan ang natin yung nangyayari sa atin ngayon. Off-season, January, December, January, magkano isang kilo ng mangga sa market? Talo na kung magbabagong taon. 80 pesos, 100 pesos per kilo. O, bibili ka kasi kailangan meron natin sa mesa, but when you eat that mango, the desirable attributes that you want in the right mango, aroma, flavor, they're not there no? because the mangoes are immature. No? So, um, probably yun ang kulang natin. No? Hindi ko mas nasabi na parang patabang yung mangga, but harvest ka na immature. No? They will not last long in storage. No? Probably, siguro mag-explore natin. Ito yung niche market na ito ang gusto na, na klase ng mangga yung matamis. No? Uh, yung top color, when we had that, uh, when we attended a uh, mango congress, uh, before, the yellow color is uh, something different, exotic, pang exotic ang dating, especially in European markets, kasi nakita nila mangga doon yung may reddish, may red tinge, or orange tinge. So yung yellow na mangga, parang nakakaiba. No? Eh ngayon hindi na daw yun, hindi na exotic. Thank you for the nice presentation about mango. I like mangoes. But can you educate me? Yung bang uh, different parts of uh, carabao mango, mm -hmm. do they have the, some little or subtle differences in the uh, by thickness of the peel or maybe susceptibility to the dreams or other diseases? Or are they are all the same in relation to susceptibility of the bad things that, that uh, you have shown us in relation to susceptibility to infection diseases? So our varieties di Carabao. Pero meron mo tayong pinatawag na strains or selections. Meron mga GPS, yung ganit sa Dimaras, meron tayo ng Lamao, yung sa Bataan, meron Sweet Elena, ng Sambalas. But all these selections or strains are highly susceptible to uh, insect infestation and diseases, especially if the conditions are favorable. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, thickness of the field, parang para pareho but when we went to uh, Leon Ilo Ilo, they have this uh, the same carabao mango, but it stays long. No? The field is thicker. No? So, yun ang hinahanap namin. Nasaan yung puno yun? Hindi lang kami matuta sa mundo. Kasi doon namin. 
But that is a good, yun ang, yun ang uh, pilit namin tinatrace, nasa inyong puno na yan. Uh, maganda, they call that Leon. Leon, uh, that was uh, a town in Iloilo, Leon, Iloilo. Meron silang uh, maganda na maganda. But uh, I think uh, yung selection or looking for uh, improved strengths of Maslow, I think it's still uh, an ongoing activity. And uh, in Guimaras, the National Mango Research and Development Center, Development Center, I think they have an ongoing uh, reading program. I don't know if I'm still uh, continuing. Because uh, in reading program, it takes, so it takes, it's a long term. It should be a long term program. That we should, dapat na simulan natin. Masyado tayo. Masyado tayo naging content. Napakasarap na ating mangga. Napakaganda na ating mangga. Eh, yung ating mga kalaban, marami pa lang. No? At um, uh, very strong yung kanila. No? Very strong yung program na nila, support to the industry. No? Of course, the, the government and uh, tayo, sinusuport na ating industry. But there are certain limitations. Other comments or, or suggestions or inquiries? So in terms of uh, breeding, is there an institution that is involved in breeding? Because this is a long time, long term uh, project. So it cannot be a two years project for a five years project. I think it's a craft science master. I do not represent one, uh, the breeders. I'm not a breeder, I'm a plant physiologist. But actually, there's no breeding work on mango sa atin. But we have a project with Del Monte. We're trying to induce flowering of the different varieties of mango in the orchard to be sources of, uh, to be parents to breed our mango. At least we started last year with the breeding work. And then we have developed the somatic embryogenesis protocol so that we can transfer genes for delayed ripening. Yung nakuhang, ang grupo nila, Dr. Mendoza, they have cloned the gene for delayed ripening. But to introduce the genes, you must have a protocol, tissue culture protocol for mango. And mango na pagaling umitim because of the phenolics. So it was only a few years ago that we were able to complete the system from from embryogenesis to uh, transplant of the uh, somatic embryo derived plants sa field. So sa field, meron na kami dalawang halaman. Kaya lang, as usual, tapos na yung project funds. So nagahanap naman ulit ng project funds to continue the work. Thank you. Other.